Today, we're going to make a simply stenciled card, so let's get into it. Starting out today with the Hi There Greetings stamp set. This is a large six by eight stamp set with tons of all purpose greetings, and I have the coordinating dies as well. I've also got a few inks pulled here, and I've got the Love Letter Stencil. Now this is a really fun layered stencil that lets you isolate some of these cute little illustrations and add color in such an easy way. I'm going to use just the balloon, so let's get started. I'm masking off the balloon, the first layer that I want to use, and I'm going to bring in some carnation ink. These are the positively saturated inks from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm going to go heavier at the base of the balloon and fade it out lightly as I go to the top. The nice thing about stencils is they really do help you to control the pressure and how you lay down the ink. So if you're new to blending, they are a great way to get your feet wet. I'm taping the second layer that I want to use into place, and again, just masking off the areas I don't want to get any ink on while I'm blending. And I'm bringing in my second color, which is peachy. This is a beautiful orange, and again, going a little deeper at the base of the heart balloon shape and fading it up as we go. I'm not doing as much blending and lightness or darkness on the actual envelope base, but I think that's gonna look great. I'm taping the final layer that I'm going to use for the balloon into place, and I'm coming in with a deeper pink, and this is peony, which is just a really bright, happy, almost magenta pink. I put another piece of masking tape down because I just didn't want to get anything else on this panel. And I also decided to go ahead and make the strings the same color and then bring in the peony for the bottom of the envelope. I just think that is such a cute design and look at how cute that turned out. Next, I'm going to use the hearts on here, just the smaller one, and I'm coming in with carnation and masking off just to make sure I protect the cardstock below and adding three hearts, and it's so quick and easy, I didn't even need to remask anything. Just pick up the stencil and go. Then I'll go ahead and take the little deep shadow area and do the same thing. I'm just layering that in with the other stencil, and it's not even lined up perfectly, but I still think it looks super cute. I found a piece of doll pink cardstock, and I thought this would be great for my greeting, so I'm going to use Hello My Friend Pop that down, pick it up, and I've got it in my Misty here. Now I will rub my fingers over this just a bit to prime the stamp, and I'll use an anti-static powder bag just to run it over the cardstock to remove static and oil. I've got my clear embossing ink. This is from Simon Says Stamp, and I'll ink up my stamp really well, bring it down with the Misty door, and I've got a little stamp press here called a Stampin' Bug, and I'm just going to use that to apply pressure to the door of the Misty. I wanted to get one more coating, so making sure that my cardstock didn't move, I inked up and stamped again. This time, it had just the coverage that I was looking for. Next, I'm going to add some fine detail white powder from Simon Says Stamp, sprinkle it all over where I've stamped, and then I always let it just sit there for a second, let it do its thing, let it adhere, and then just tilt the paper, tap it off, give it a little tap on the back, and often I'll just do one more little coat. Because I use the anti-static powder, it really doesn't stick anywhere. There's only a couple little areas, so I funneled the excess powder back in, and I brought in one of my little angled shader brushes, which are really great. If there's any extra powder or little tiny pieces, look at that little tiny piece that's right above the swoop in the D. You can just tap it and lift it away. I heated up my heat tool and quickly melted the powder. Love watching it come to life and brighten up on this bold cardstock. Isn't that pretty? That looks great, so I will grab the coordinating die for this, tape it into place, and run it through my die cut machine. I'm also gonna frame out this panel because I want it to be a little smaller. And I cut that out off camera and then I'm just taking some foam tape and popping three strips on the back of the panel just to give it that support and a little bit of dimension off of my card base. 
I'm also adding some foam squares from Simon Says Stamp to my greeting. These are the thicker foam squares. They have a deeper loft because I just want to have a nice bit of pop-up on this, on my card. Isn't that cute? For my card base, I've got a piece of dull pink. This is 11 inches by four and a quarter, and I'll score it right at five and a half to create my top folding US A2 card base. I'll give it a good press with my Teflon bone folder, which doesn't leave any sheen at all on deeper cardstock colors. And I'll take the backers off of the foam tape, line this up and pop this down with that beautiful little quarter inch frame of margin space. I'll take the backers off the greeting and I like to add a little bit of liquid glue. This is Connect Glue from Gina K Designs. It just gives me a little bit of wiggle room as I position my greetings. And I need that sometimes because I don't always put it in the right place the first time, but when you have that little bit of float time, it gives you a second to confirm your placement. I like to bring in my Simon Says Stamp T-Square Ruler. This is one of my favorite tools in the craft room, and it helps me to make sure the tops of those letters are perfectly lined up, just like that. And then I can press. To finish off this card, I decided to bring in a white jelly roll pen. This is new for me. I've been trying to learn a little bit more about adding some accents, and so I'm adding just some little white highlights to my hearts. And I actually think it turned out pretty cute because it almost helped to balance out the areas that I might have misaligned the hearts. So it's pretty cute. Now here's the thing, I'm not an expert with highlighting and this type of thing, but you know what, it, you can try, it's just paper. I mean, even if I messed it up, it would be fine. The end result is pretty darn cute. So don't be afraid to try something you've never done before. This is a first for me on camera. And when I took the final pictures, I was like, hey, Kath, that's not too shabby. And that's the finished card project. You can find links to all of the supplies in today's video in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button and I will see you back here with another card project soon. To see a few more clean and simple card ideas you might enjoy, check out the two thumbnails I have linked for you below and I will see you in those videos.